All right, folks, so you should have your circuit set up in uh, part sim. Uh, we've looked at how to add these voltage and current probes. Um, now let's take a look at how to actually simulate our circuit and see what's going on here. Um, and it's actually really simple to do in part sim. I'm going to go up here where it says spice. Um, I'm going to click run. Um, it's going to pop up with the menu here. There's a lots of different options for simulating different types of circuits. Um, we're going to worry about this AC and transient response stuff uh, later. Right now we're going to focus on DC uh, characteristics. For this first simulation, I'm going to run just a simple DC bias. All that means is I've just got my standard, uh, whatever my DC voltage of my power source is. Um, so I'm going to make sure that's checked. I'm going to hit run. Um, it's going to do its thing. And bam, it's going to pop up with some values. Um, and so what it's doing at each of these probe points that I put in my circuit, it's, it's calculating the voltages at those points. And so in this case, I'm just going to kind of move those these around so it's a little bit easier to see. Um, it looks like at this point here, this VN uh, is 20 volts. Well, that corresponds directly with um, what my uh, DC voltage source is. And at this uh, point here, V mid, in between these two resist or these resistors, it looks like my voltage is 10 volts. And so what I have is a 10 volt voltage drop between my power source and this midpoint on this um, other side of R1. So that means that R1 is causing a voltage drop of 10 volts. Uh, we can do the same thing for like R2. So at V mid, I'm at 10 volts. On this other side of R2, um, I'm tied around here to ground, which is 0 volts. Um, and so the voltage drop across R2 is the same as the voltage drop across R1 in this case. It's going to be going from 10 volts to 0 vo volts. That's a drop of 10 volts. Um, now, this other value here in blue, um, the software is going through kind of what's called a numerical computation. Um, that's what it's calculating for my ground. So it's like you know 10 times 10 to the negative third. It's a really, really small value. It's essentially 0 volts. Um, and so that's what I would expect for the ground. And so here we're seeing um, the voltages at different points in my circuit. Uh, super. Now, I'm sure you guys are wondering where are the currents? Um, this is not showing the currents in this circuit. And we've specified, you know, I want two uh, current probes in this circuit as well. Well, in order to figure out what currents are using the SPICE program, uh, we actually have to run a small sweep to calculate those currents. Because um, again, this is doing a numerical computation to calculate the values in my circuit. So I'm going to go back to run simulation. Uh, where it says DC bias, I'm going to uncheck that. Um, I am going to check DC sweep. Um, and we're, it doesn't super matter what my starting and stopping voltages are. Uh, we did our calculation for 20 volts, so I'm going to make that stop voltage 20 volts. Um, and so what this is going to do is it's going to do some calculations starting at 0 volts stepping up the voltage one volt at a time uh, until it reaches 20 volts. If I run that, um, that's going to give you, you know, a fancy little uh, graph. So, you know, taking a look at uh, what this graph is telling us, this is my sweep voltage. Um, each of these lines is something different. So that's, you know, V... V mid, um, that's my input voltage. Um, which I guess is super interesting. Um, but what I'm really interested in is this I line. So this is the I calculated for um, R2. Uh, and you'll see there should be a green line that's the I calculated for R1. Well, what do you guys notice? There's no green line. And actually, that green line is right on top of this orange line. And we know because these resistors have the same resistance that they should have the same current going through them since they're connected in series. If we go out here to uh, 20 volts, we see that I've got 10 milliamps, otherwise known as uh, 0.01 amps, which is I think what we calculated in the pr uh, previous question on your worksheet. Uh, but this does actually verify that R1 and R2 are going to be the same uh, current for this particular circuit. Um, now what's nice about this software is I can go back and I can change things pretty easily. Um, 
Like for example, R2 is one kilo ohm. What if I wanted to try a different value? Well, I'm just gonna click R2. I'm gonna change that value to, I don't know, let's make it 10 uh, kilo ohms. Hit enter, that's gonna change that to 10K. Um, and I can run my simulation again. So if I do my like DC bias, I can run that. Uh, it's going to calculate the two different values. And so if I made this uh, resistor quite a bit bigger, you'll notice the voltage drop across R1 is a lot smaller, and the voltage drop across R2 is a lot bigger. So the bigger resistance has the bigger uh, voltage drop. And of course, we can do our DC sweep analysis, and that's going to calculate... Yeah, stopping it. That's going to calculate our um, voltages and resistances as we increase the voltage from 0 volts to 20 volts. And of course, those values have changed a bit. Um, the total current is going to decrease because I increased the equivalent resistance quite a bit. Uh, but you can play around with that. And you can explore like a lot of different values just by clicking and changing numbers without having to go through a whole bunch of calculations, which is where this SPICE software is going to come in uh, pretty handy when we're trying to design more complicated circuits. It keeps us from having to do a lot of really complicated uh, calculations and it lets us explore how our circuit is shaping voltages um, in order to you know, try and get that to be something useful. So we will play around with more complicated uh, circuits using this software and it'll you know, let us do that without getting bogged down too much in the calculations.